least you could have gotten some sleep, Nick. We'll both hit the sack for a couple of days after your mom is home safe. You have an appointment today in San Francisco. Hey, it's us. It's just us. Hello? Yeah. Did you guys hear anything? Nothing. Nothing. Been a long night, huh? Yeah. Thanks for coming by. You guys are pretty worn out, too. Listen, has Eden come home yet or, or called or anything? No. No word. Still no word on Mom, either. Fire's out of control, so they can get a search party in there. I mean, for all we know, we don't even know if Mom got out of that cabin in time or not. Come on, chances are Lionel got her out in plenty of time. Probably right after uh, Bren was picked up by the helicopter. Well, they found a horse running wild. Now, how far could they have gotten on foot? Lionel! Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Are you all right? Just let... <coughs> let me catch my breath for a minute. Please don't go out there again. No, no, no. There's no place to go anyway. Lionel? Uh, how long do we have left? Not long. Not long at all. Yes, I know, Judge. Yes, it is unfortunate that Eden was detained. She just couldn't avoid it. No, 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 no. Yes, I know that you don't often marry people. I know that you're doing us a favor. Thank you. Judge, tell me, what time does your plane leave? I see. Yes, that is tight. I, however, I still think we'll be able to make it before you have to leave. Right. Okay. Thank you. No, no, no. Believe me. We'll be there. Good enough. Siento, yo no debería haber venido aquí. Suéltame. Where have you been? I've been looking for you. No quería que me encontraran. Me fui un par de días. Por favor, suéltame. ¿No quieres saber lo que se ha dicho de ti desde que desapareciste? Lo sé todo. No puedes saberlo. De otro modo, no habrías estado apartada. Parece que tu amigo Kir ha ido por ahí diciéndole a la gente, escucha bien, ha ido diciendo por ahí que os vais a casar. Yo sé, sé que es... La clase de hombre con el que... con el que saldrías una temporada, pero... nunca con el que compartirías toda tu vida. ¿Quieres dejarlo ya? ¿Está mintiendo? 
No. ¿Te vas a casar con Kirk Creston? Sí. ¿Por qué? Porque quiero hacerlo. ¿Por eso desapareciste sin decirle a nadie dónde estabas? ¿Es eso lo que ha dicho él? No, su versión era que estabas muy ocupada preparando la boda. Deberíais poneros de acuerdo para contar la misma historia. Cruz, eso es algo entre él y yo, no es asunto tuyo. Perdóname, no quería entrometerme en tu vida privada, Aiden. Me he quedado sorprendido al venir aquí y encontrarte en esta casa que compré para ti. En lugar de estar en el centro haciendo la lista de bodas Vamos, o eligiendo Cruz, tu ajuar. Vamos, no seas maleducado, no es tu estilo. Perdóname otra vez. No sé por qué esta situación no me entra en la cabeza. Pues a mí sí. Ajá. ¿No querrías explicármelo por los viejos tiempos? ¿Qué estás haciendo aquí? Por los viejos tiempos. Es un último adiós. Abajo lo viejo, arriba lo nuevo, el rey ha muerto, viva el rey, ¿es eso? No, Cruz. Cruz, estarás mejor sin... No me digas que estaré mejor sin ti, Iden. No has contestado a mi pregunta. ¿Por qué te casas con él? Por las razones por las que se casa la gente. Ah, no me vengas con esas. Si, si me pongo a pensar en las razones por las cuales los dos deberíais estar juntos, siempre acaban pareciéndome patéticas. ¿Y si es eso lo que piensas? ¿Por qué te molestas en preguntar? Voy a decirte una cosa. Te está utilizando. Parece mentira que no te hayas dado cuenta. Lo ha estado haciendo desde que te conoció. Tú no le quieres. ¿Cómo lo sabes? Porque me quieres a mí. No. No, no te quiero. Escúchame, no he terminado. No sé si me mientes a mí o te estás mintiendo a ti misma. Pero hay un lazo entre nosotros. Lo siento en todo momento, Iden. Sé que si se rompiera lo notaría. Pero no se ha roto. No lo comprendes. No sabes nada. Entonces, ¿por qué no me lo explicas? ¿Por qué no me dices lo que pasa? Es lo menos que me merezco. No puedo casarme contigo. Ya, ese es el mensaje que recibo. Pero no entiendo por qué tienes que casarte con él 20 segundos más tarde. Voy a hacerlo. Así que vete asumiéndolo. ¿Lo has asumido tú? No me está forzando nadie. Ajá. En esa serie de preciosas explicaciones que me estás dando falta una cosa. No me has dicho que le quieres. ¿Cómo iba a casarme con el sino? Dime una cosa. Quiero que sea convincente para no tener dudas sobre lo que ya sé. Adelante, dime qué quieres aquí, que le deseas. Adelante, dímelo. No me fuerces. No me presiones. Lo estoy haciendo porque... ¿Por qué? Me caso con Kir porque somos compatibles y de una manera que tú nunca comprenderías. Él es amable y comprensivo y me entiende muy bien. De lo que entiende mucho es de cómo atraparte. Tú no le quieres. Le quiero. Yo le quiero. El lazo entre nosotros se ha roto para siempre y nunca volverá a ser lo mismo. Y si no te das cuenta es porque no quieres. Le quiero y no quería hacerte ningún daño. Lo siento. ¿Sabes una cosa? No es más que basura. Lo siento. Lo siento. Espera un momento, espera un momento. Espera. Por favor. Solo quiero decirte algo más. Tenía otra razón para venir. Quería encontrarte para que supieras lo de Sofía. Ya me lo has dicho. No, tú no sabes lo que pasa. Sofía llevó a Brandon a un campamento. Cerca del lago Casitas. ¿No te suena de algo? Hay un incendio enorme en esa zona. Sí, lo hay. Han rescatado a Brandon. Sofía está missing.
Kirk said he'd already knows about Mom. When did he talk to her? Uh, he said he's been with her all along. Well, that's weird. He's called me twice asking me if I know where she is. I don't get it. The man definitely sounds confused. Well, he certainly wasn't confused about the wedding. What wedding? He, he, he didn't tell you guys. What? Uh, um, he and Eden are going to get married. Eden and Kirk? That's crazy. I know, I know, but uh, that's what he said. And Cruz was standing right there. And... Where is she? I mean, she's going to get married, and if she knows about Mom, why isn't she here? What is going on? Well, I guess she's still upset at us for the way she was lying to us. Yeah, well, we're upset about Mom, too. But that doesn't mean that we don't want her alive. And I know Eden doesn't, too. Honey, now, come on. No, Eden easy. would be here if she knew about this. All right. Unless something's wrong. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right. We'll get a hold of Kirk. We'll talk to him. We'll find out what's going on. There's got to be an explanation for this. Yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared about everything, you guys. Kelly. Sophia's with Lionel. They'll get her out of there. She is a survivor, if ever there was one. The only thing she didn't survive was coming back to this family. It's because we drove her away, that's why. Yeah. I just hope to God it's not too late to tell her I love her. Yeah, I want that chance, too. I mean, she tried so hard to make it up to me, and I, I wouldn't even listen to her. You'll both get your chance. Well, Warren and Santana are still up there. They... I promise they'd give us a call as soon as they heard anything. All we can do now is wait. It's <coughs> <coughs> never, I never one to wait. Just wait and sit by passively and let things happen to me. But if they were good or bad... And now we just have to sit here and wait. Do you believe in miracles? I know you do. Once when I was in Bali, I had lived in this same village for about six months, and all of a sudden the volcano above it erupted. It was a great white cloud of destructive volcanic ash and lava as far as you could see and it was headed straight downhill towards this village destroying every bit of life in its path and I was standing under this Waringian tree which they hold sacred and I was imagining the faces of the villagers running down that hill trying to stay ahead of a dis destructive cloud. What happened? The lava changed its course. It missed the village. Now, there was a rational explanation for it. But I always thought it was a miracle. Well, Lionel, would you please pray for a miracle? Because I'm very frightened and I don't want to die. Hey, neither do I. At this moment, I have the greatest desire to go right on living. I can feel your heart beating. Yeah? <laughs> I remember the first time that you said that. Did I? Yeah. You sure did. The first time we ever met love. You said, I can feel your heart beating. And then... Put your hand. I put my hand on your throat. Right here. <laughs> can you feel my pulse? Feel it. Now touch me here. Can you feel it? Boy. Remember? Yes. I remember. I'm gonna call Kirk. 
Kirk and find out about Eden. What about me? Eden! You're okay! Where have you been? I don't know how happy we are to see you. Where the heck have you been, Eden? Huh? I've been off by myself, recharging my batteries. Well, you should have let somebody know. I know, okay? I picked a lousy time to go into seclusion. They've been as worried about you as about your mother. Did you hear? Yes, I just heard. I'm, I'm sorry that I wasn't here for you. I knew you wouldn't stay away if you'd known. Well, then why did Kirk say you were... Any news about Sophia? He, she's with Lionel. That's all we know. Well, what can we do? Just wait. Yeah, Warren's up there right now with the search party, but they can't go in until the fire's under control. Well, guys, maybe we should go up there, too. Well, I'm going to do something very soon. If I don't hear something, I hate this waiting around stuff. Listen, they've got enough civilians up there right now. You'd only be adding to their problems. I know you want to do something, but... Yeah. Hello? Uh, Ted, this is Cruz. I just got a call from the fire chief up at the lake. They may have found Sophia and Lionel. Alive? What? What, did they find her? I can't hear you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, yes, alive. Uh, a man and a woman matching their description uh, were picked up a few minutes ago on the other side of the lake. I don't know any more than that right now because the chief has got the news himself. But he's going to call as soon as they have a positive ID, and I'll get back to you. Okay, all right, we'll be right here, Cruz. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I think they found him. Oh, hey, it's right. not for sure, though, so let's not get carried away. Yeah, let's get carried away. No, no, not Ted's no, right. No, I know it's them. Well, I know it, Mom's it does right. look pretty good. Well, I think I'll call Cruz. Uh, Eden. Kirk um, made this big announcement yesterday about uh, about you and him. Um, I wish that... Uh, I wish that he would have waited so that I could have told you all together. You mean this is true? Yeah, we're getting married. I was hoping he was making this up. I don't believe this. How could you not believe it? I mean, you know how close we've become. Yeah, but you don't love him, Eden. How can you say that I do love him? We're very much in love with each other. What about Cruz? Yeah. It's over. If it's over like it's been over before, it's not over at all. Yeah, this is no those little Wait a second. Guys wait, have. no. You guys have no right to make any any decisions in my personal life. I mean, your your decisions begin and end in the boardroom. Your privilege does not extend into my personal life. Look, Eden, nobody intended to intrude into your personal life or anything. Look, all I need from you is respect for me and the man I'm going to marry. I don't want you being rude to Kirk. We're not going to be rude to the guy. Eden, we just want you to be happy. Well, I am happy. And I'll be even happier when we're married. Well, when's the wedding going to be? Uh, I don't know. We haven't made any plans. But I'll let you know. Um, listen, if you need to reach me about anything, just uh, call the Kirk's apartment, okay? We can't, we can't relive the past, even if we don't have a future. We're not the same people we used to be. You're right. I'm sorry. At least we've become friends in spite of everything, huh? <laughs> yes, we have. It's getting harder to breathe. I think of all the breath I've wasted in my life, I'd give anything for a fraction of it back. <laughs> you, you just waste it again like we do all good things. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Oh, damn it! This isn't the way I planned it at all. <laughs> I was going to I was going to go out just having made the greatest archaeological find of the century. <laughs> I, was, I was going out with a bang, not a whimper. <laughs> oh, I should have taken a course in, in, in resignation before I came riding in here. You know? oh, I have a lot of trouble meeting my fate with quiet dignity. No one. We'll know. I promise I won't tell a soul. And well, okay, we'll keep the secret between us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, son. 
Do you have any idea how much I like you? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you do? I, know I do very much. If I if I never met you before in my life, and uh, before I rode into this godforsaken little box of a shack, I would like you very, very much. <laughs> saved our grandson. Yeah. Listen, now, uh, I've decided I'm not going to San Francisco this morning. Now, Nick... There is no reason you should stay here. No, I'm gonna... Just because I can't go, is that it? I'm going to stick around, just in case you need me. I won't need you. Mom is found. She's okay. Well, I probably wouldn't be able to get there on time now anyway. Yes, you would, because you're going to get the next flight out of here. Kelly, don't. Hey, come on. If they are really interested in me, they'll still be interested next week. And don't be so sure. Listen, I was in publishing too, remember? I'm telling you... My advice is, if the contract's hot, strike it now. It's going to be cold by the time you want it. Sometimes you are so stubborn. Don't you think I can take care of my own professional life myself? No. Hey, come on. I want everybody to see your beautiful photographs up there. Hello? Yeah, I'd like to book a seat on the next flight to San Francisco. What about the one after that? All right, thank you. You're all picked up. That's that? No. I'm going to call another airline. Now, wait a minute. The company jet. We can use the company jet. The Capwell corporate jet? For my appointment? Sure, why not? It's been sitting in the hangar for so long, it needs to get out and do some exercise anyway. George. Hi, this is Kelly Capwell. How are you? Good, thanks. Listen, I have a friend that needs to get to San Francisco right away, and I was wondering if the plane was available. Yeah. Well, how long will it take for the pilot to get there? Yeah. Hi. I well, was see, we uh, can't wait that long. by to see if uh, Kelly's mom No, he has to be there by 6 o'clock. Thanks, Dylan. Nice. Yeah. We think she's safe, but there's been no confirmation. Right. Hey, hang on one second, please. Hang on. Dylan, can you fly a jet? Yeah, why? Are you busy this morning? No, what's up? Nick needs to get to San Francisco as fast as possible, and, and we can use the company jet. Yeah? Listen, George, we have our pilot. We'll be right over. Thanks a lot. He said the plane will be fueled and ready to go by the time we get there. Come on! What are we waiting for? Eden, you came back. Why did you think I wouldn't? Well, I consider the possibility, along with others... Oh, my God, what happened to you? Where, where have you been? Never, never mind. I, I don't need to know any of that. The most important thing, that, that you're here now. Oh, sweetheart, I was afraid that I lost you. I love you so much. Well, I'm sorry. It was sort of selfish of me to have taken off and not let you know. I promised I won't do that again. Eden, I have something to tell you. It's about your mother. Oh, no, no, I know. I, I think everything's taken care of. She should be fine. Oh, really? Well, that's great. Yeah. So there's nothing that can stop us. From what? Well, from getting married today. Today? Yeah, Judge Raleigh, he's waiting right down the office. All we have to do is go there and it's done. Well, Kirk, uh, we haven't had any time to plan. Do we Eden, we agreed uh, on not having a big wedding. I know. Right? Look, sweetheart, all I want to do is become your husband as soon as possible so that I can take care of you and protect you. Well, you have been taking care of me. Yes, but I want it to be official. Well, tell me, is there any real reason for us to wait? No. Well, then why not today? All right. Won't be sorry. I'm going to do everything in the world to make you happy, Eden. I know you will. Oh, Kirk, I, I don't even have a wedding dress. I can't, I can't. I... Here's hoping that you're a size eight, because that is the size of the dress that is in this closet. You bought me a wedding dress? Yes, the eternal optimist. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. I went ahead and did it. Well, that's, that's. Oh, what am I doing? Fine, thank you. Uh... Oh, God, you know, I'm so excited. Honestly, I mean, my hands are shaking. I mean, look at that. You have turned me into a quivering pile of jelly. And I love it. And I love you. 
Look, we better get hopping. Why don't I take these things upstairs so that you can get changed, get ready? Hey, by the way, do you have any breakfast? No, I'm, I'm not hungry. I'm making a mean piece of toast, no. Mrs. Cranston. I'm not hungry. Would you do something very special for me right now before we get going? Would you put the ring on that I bought you? You didn't lose it. No. Why'd you put the ring in the glass, Eden? No more questions. We have to have a toast. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. To what? To you. To the only real man I know. To the handsomest. The most desirable. To the brightest. I feel so lucky to have you. If I haven't told you before, I'm telling you now. Thanks. You're welcome. But I, I, I can't drink to me. Then drink to us. Drink. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Uh, there's something in the bottom of my glass. Hope it's not a worm. I think there's only worms in tequila, not champagne. What is it? I don't know. Uh, what do you think it is? Well, good heavens, it looks like an engagement ring, doesn't it? Why don't you try it on? I'll try anything once. wasn't meant for me. Too small. What about you, lady? You want to take a chance? Uh-oh. It's a perfect fit. It's astonishing. You know, there's a question goes along with a ring like this. I know there is. But let me ask it. Will you marry me, Cruz? You couldn't have forgotten that. I'm not going to let you ruin your life. Or mine. Well, we haven't seen you around here in quite a while, yeah, Miss Capwell. Yeah, I haven't been doing much flying, George. This is uh, Nick and Dylan Hartley. Dylan's the pilot. It's a pleasure. Hi, I'm pleased Hi. to meet you. Look, she's almost ready to go. One of the veins was bent, and I'm replacing it. All right. Thanks Shouldn't take more than a minute, Miss okay. Capwell. Seems like you've got it made, Miss Capwell. How is that, Mr. Hartley? Well, most of the time you pretend to be like plain folks, just like the rest of us. But then, unlike the rest of us, you can turn into a rich kid whenever you want to. Well, I'm not going to apologize for having money, Dylan. Of course not. It's not your fault. 
Oh, what, would it make you more comfortable if I were to give it all away? Is that it? If I said yes, will you do it? Dylan, you are a hypocrite. Uh oh, my brother's going to give me the what for again. Yeah, you bet I am. You nearly got us all killed over a map to a gold mine. Now, if you'd actually gotten your hands in that gold, probably the first thing you would have done is gone out and brought yourself a brand new shiny jet. He knows me too well. <laughs> Nobody's more together about money than Kelly. You don't need to fight my mm. battles. I'm not. I'm just one of the things I admire about you. That and the beauty mark. No. I'm Excuse me, I'll go and fly a kite or an airplane or something. Uh, excuse me, somebody just left a phone message for Mr. Nick Hartley. It sounds important. Nick, if you can spare a minute. <sighs> what is it? Well, your photo lab called and wanted to catch you before you left, Mr. Hartley. Uh, seems you lost the labeling on the rolls of film you sent yesterday. Oh, no. Right. I can't believe it. Well, there goes San Francisco. Well, no. Kelly, I'm sorry I put you through all this trouble. Wait a second. Which assignment is it? Can I go to the lab and do it for you? Not this one. It's the spread I'm doing for Sport America. You know all the shots I took of the sailboat races? I'm the only one who can tell them which photograph goes where. And the deadline, of course, is tomorrow. I can't tell you how flousy I feel about not being able to go make this meeting now. I guess I wanted that contract more than I thought. Well, listen, why don't I go in your stead? You can just brief me on what to say. No, Dylan, I'm sorry you can't. You're not familiar with the concept of the new book. But Kelly is. Oh, no. Uh, I don't think I should go. No, of course not. Uh, yes, your mother. Yeah. But, you know, uh, Mom is probably fine. And she's probably on her way home safe and sound. And listen, I know how important it is to you. So we'll go and... I'll be back tonight. I don't know what to say. Come on. Don't worry about it. All right. I don't want to be in an argument with you twice in one day. You go. And you take care of her. She is precious cargo, Dylan. Sure thing. There's nothing to worry about. It'll be a safe, smooth trip. Hey, Cruz. Hey, Ted. I got to see Eden. Is she here? No, she just uh, came and went a little while ago. Went where? She went to Kirk's. I'm sorry, Cruz. Save your sympathy for Kirk. Yeah? You gonna stop the wedding? I'm gonna try. Cruz. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. Today's my wedding day. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. Okay. Can't wait to see how you look in that dress. I'll be right there. Come on. Oh, my bride. You look so beautiful. Thank you. Oh, Eden, that dress is lovely on you. Thanks. How are you feeling? I'm okay. How are you? Still shaky and sweaty palms now. I guess that's what they call the last-minute jitters, huh? I guess so. Oh, a bit a little hitch in our plans. Uh, Judge Raleigh apparently had to fly out of town another appointment, so he's not going to be able to perform the uh, ceremony for us. Well... But resourceful man that he is, he has made arrangements for us to see a justice of the peace just outside of Santa Barbara. I mean, that is not what I had in mind. In fact, it's some little office next to a grocery store or something. But this is the only surefire way that we're going to get married today. Sure, it doesn't matter. Shall we go? Yeah. I'm sorry, I shouldn't... I shouldn't have kissed you. No, it's all right. That the kiss, it was a good kiss. <laughs> it's the other things. You know what? I don't, I think that I could actually face dying if I just had a little more time. No one else to bargain with, is there? Even the devil didn't show up. 
Oh, that sure is my idea of hell. It is hell. It is. It's hell to have things unsaid and unfinished. It's the usual way, I guess. Isn't it? I mean, I'm not prepared for this. Bills unpaid, letters unanswered. I, I didn't even tell the paper boy to stop. Don't joke it, Lionel. I have to. That's the way I deal with it. Not, it's not having said goodbye to the people we love. Not making things right with Cece and the children. You know, and it's not for me. It's not just for my sake. It really isn't. I don't want them to spend the rest of their lives with, with bitter feelings. <sighs> you know, I, I, I once asked my kids, I said... If you only had five minutes left in your life, what would you do? And Lincoln... Lincoln said I'd go to the refrigerator and drag out a quarter of chocolate ice cream and eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> if there was any time left, I'd eat another quart. <laughs> and, and Warren... <laughs> Warren said... He said, Pop, I'd go out and find me the most beautiful woman I could find. <laughs> And if she was willing, we'd make mad, passionate love. <laughs> yeah. What would you do if you only had five minutes? Well, under the circumstances, that's a very practical question. I guess I'd... I guess I'd indulge myself the way my kids did. They don't have any ice cream. Only a beautiful one. Can I help you folks? Yeah, we had an appointment with the Justice of Peace. Sure, he told us all about it. Oh, great. Excuse me, I'll go get him for you. Thank you. How are you feeling? Fine, I'm just a little dizzy. Really? Are you, how about a little fresh air? I'm, I'm fine. I'm sorry. No, even like I said, last minute jitters. You know, nobody gets married without them. I just didn't think I was going to get married without my family being here. Well, we could have called them and have them meet us here. No. I guess if I can't have my father walk me down the aisle, then, then it's all right. It doesn't matter. Oh, Eden, I hope a ceremony matters to you. I mean, I, aside from it just being the two of us and the justice and the peace out in the middle of nowhere. Mainly, I hope that the words will seem sacred to you, the same way they will to me. I'm going to live by those. I'm going to cherish you for the rest of my life. Eden, I want to talk to you. Cranston, open up or I'll knock this thing down again, man. What's going on out here? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get in touch with this guy, Kirk Cranston. It's an emergency. Oh, I hope it's not bad news. He's on his way to get married right now. I saw them leave not more than 20 minutes ago. She's such a pretty girl. Uh, where, where were they going? Did they say where they're going? Well, uh, when he told me about it yesterday down by the mailboxes, he said a judge from the courthouse was going to marry them. Name? It reminded me of a city in North Carolina... Charlotte, no, no, Raleigh, Raleigh, and Mr. Cranston was very happy because Judge Raleigh was Judge going Raleigh. to marry them. Yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. I hope it's not bad news. That's the ceremony started yet. Hey, your pardon? Hey, you can't go in there. Where are they? Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about Kirk Cranston and Eden Capwell. Judge Raleigh's supposed to be marrying them right now. Judge Raleigh went out of town. The couple you're talking about went somewhere else to be married. Where? I really can't give out that information. Look, I'm Inspector Castillo with the Santa Barbara Police. I need the information. Well, in that case, they went to another Justice of the Peace, just outside of Ojai. Thank you. Do you have the address? Yeah, I have it right here somewhere. Take your time. I'll grow a beard. Here it is. 693 Kilo Juliet over and out. You really love flying, don't you? <laughs> How can you tell? It was different up here than you are on the ground. Different how? I don't know, you just seem more at peace with yourself. 
I am. I can never explain that to Nick, though. I didn't realize how much I had missed it. Oh, steady there, girl. Steady. Steady now. Come on, let's lift that wing right up out of there. That's a good cowbird. Good girl. Good girl. Talking to this plane like it's your girlfriend, Dale. <laughs> Well, there's an intimate relationship between a man and his plane. It's almost like make... Close, but not quite. To join together this man and this woman in the bonds of matrimony, which is an honorable estate, and therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly. dropping in on Santa Barbara at the same time tomorrow, so join us then. In an hour on your entertainment channel, it's time for the DJ Cat Show. In half an hour, it's our comedy, the new Leave It to Beaver. And first, we're off to meet Maud, who's about to fall out with Walter over his will. <laughs> <laughs> 